Last time we were talking about AND and OR tables, truth tables, truth tables, and I mentioned to you that, well, if one statement um, has to be true for with, with 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 the logical word and then both of them of the conditions so the statement a and statement b have to be true in order for the whole statement to be true even if one is false then the whole statement just for and will become false so and seems to be a little bit more restrictive more more strict let's write that now for or, it is more flexible even if one of them is uh, false, then the overall truth of the statement still remains. The only way that, um, that the or statement could be false is if both of the given conditions, so alpha, so last time I was saying that I'm equating alpha, so alpha is my statement 1, uh, so let me write that, and, and then 1, and then beta is for my statement 2, then the only way that a OR statement could be false is if both alpha, so my first statement, and uh, my second statement, which is beta, so statement uh, alpha OR, so let me put a OR here, OR, beta, if both of them are false, if both of them are false, that's the only way that the overall uh, truth of the, of the statement uh, can be false. Now, if you are a more graphical person, what I did is I am going to make it a little bit more colorful for you. So right here on the right side, you see that I have put green um, for, um, for true. And I'm going to make false, false, I'm going to make that uh, uh, red. I know I switched the colors. I just noticed that I put the color first here, but it's it's an equality. You can put it however you want to. So let's look at this. There is a very uh, neat pattern in this. For and, you will see that it's false. So I'm gonna just put colors as I said uh, on uh, on the table. So we see that it's false on three spots, and over here it's only false on one one spot and let me take green now in the and truth table truth table um, it's green at one spot however it's green at three spots um, in the in the or truth table so a good way to think about this let's say you are on an exam uh, how will you remember this it's a very easy pattern what you do is you start with your and, and this is how I did it on my exam, so it might help you. So, and, you think to yourself, well, you make yourself, you put and on at the corner, you write yourself true, false, true, false. Now, there is this distinct pattern of the truth just existing at one corner. That's how I remembered it. So this is what I wrote. I said for and, it's just a little dot, and for or, it's 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 this weird um, uh, kind of a L L flipped ninety degrees um, uh, clockwise because the L looks like this. If we flip it. 90, 90 degrees clockwise, it will look something like this. So if you flip the L at 90 degrees, then you see this pattern. So this is what I did. For for the AND, I had one dot, and for OR, I had this flipped L. So how I did, how I did it on my exams is I drew a, a truth table, and I looked at this this design for and I had a dot which meant that well there's only one true in this table so everything else had to be false and when I had to do the or truth table once again I put the true false true false and I looked at this pattern I put true 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 I made that pattern and then I put false wherever that pattern did not exist now, in this lecture, hopefully you understand this. Hopefully you understand why we have these tables and how these work. And if you don't, then you can visit the lecture that I did before this. And um, hopefully that should clear it up.